Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Pothon Programming Vlog, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to program some basic functions and variables and objects and all the cool things that you need to know how to do in order to make cool applications. So, first what I did was I just created a little directory for my project. This is it right here. In it, I created two files. I created my HTML file called objects.html, and I created a JavaScript file called objects.js. And in my text editor here, which is Atom text editor from GitHub, by the way, it's a really great text editor. If you're just using like Notepad or something, you might want to look into getting a better one. This is definitely a better one. It's free, and I recommend it. So anyway, you open up your text editor. Um, I have the files here in the text editor. I have them open. This is the HTML file. So what you want to do is go to your objects.js file and write some code. So to declare a variable in JavaScript, it's really easy. Um, you just say var, um, you call whatever you want. Let's do some object-oriented stuff. We're going to say time equals 343. It's a good way to do time. It's a good variable name. It de describes what the variable is. Um, since JavaScript is what they call loosely typed, you don't have to define what kind of variable you're putting in or what kind of data you're putting into a variable. So for instance, this is a string here. It's just when you have two quotation marks around the value, it becomes a string and in a strongly typed language, you would have to actually type out like string time equals 343. But in JavaScript, you don't have to do that. In JavaScript, a variable can literally be anything. You could have var um, whatever equals whatever. It could be a number. It can be an array literal. It can be an object literal. It can be a function. It could be anything. So it's really easy to declare variables in JavaScript. So what I'm going to do now is make an, an object and call it rectangle. And the rectangle is going to be an object literal. They call it an object literal because you're literally defining the object. Um, say, if I want to declare an object that's not an object literal, I could say that is an example of declaring an array object without using an object literal. If I'm going to use an object literal, I would say var array equals and then literally type out an array. So my array would be one, two, three, four. And this is the difference between declaring an array with the new operator and just declaring an array as an array literal by using those square brackets there, these guys here. But anyway, back to what I was doing. Just gonna declare a rectangle, an object-oriented style. So some things that a rectangle might have would be some coordinates. So I could say x coordinate is at zero, y coordinate is at 10, and then also a rectangle would have a width, which I'm going to say is 100, and a height, which is going to be 200. So you might have noticed it's a little bit different when you're declaring variables inside of an object literal than from the way it is when you're declaring them just in normal scope. So in normal scope, I would declare x just like this. Inside of an object literal, I would declare x like this x colon zero and then if I have a variable that I'm going to declare after x I would put a comma in. It's just the syntax just the way it is declaring x this way and declaring x this way is the same exact thing you just have to declare it this way when it's inside of an object the literal so no big deal it's basically just declaring a variable. So anyway I have my rectangle now I got to put it to good use. So I'm going to put some of those values on the screen in the developer tools 
console window. So I'm going to say console dot log um, rectangle dot x plus here I'm concatenating a string together, which means I'm just going to put I'm going to make a dynamic string, I guess you could say, that is made up of the variable rectangle.x, this comma in the space, and then this rectangle.y. And these three things are going to be converted into one solid string and then output in the console window. So now I'm going to save this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to import this objects.js file into my HTML document by writing a script tag and giving it the source uh, value of my file, my objects.js file. And then I'm going to declare the type and close the script tag. And it's as simple as that. So you put this into your body element, and when the browser is reading this, it'll import your objects.js file and execute the code inside of it. So I'm going to save this now. I'm going to go to my directory and run objects.html with Chrome Web Browser. actually already tested this out before, but here we have the page. We have the title here, Objects and Virus, which I declared right up here in the HTML. So we've got that. We're going to check out the developer tools and see what it has to say in the console window. So in the console window, we have the output 0, 10, which is exactly what we want because in our JavaScript file, we told it to output the rectangle's x-coordinate, which is 0, a comma and a space, and the rectangle's y-coordinate, which is 10. And I actually forgot to put a semicolon on there, which is apparently not a big deal. But if I were to have an error, let's just say var a equals 2 space 2. That doesn't mean anything. I could do 2 plus 2 and get 4. So let's test that out. I'm going to show you guys why the uh, console window here is so useful for debugging your code. Oh, wait, I forgot to output it. Just tell the console to log that variable there. Now we'll see 4 in the output as well. Here we go, we have a 4. Now if I go back here and just create an error, for the parser so it doesn't know what to do here because my syntax is wrong I can't say variable a equals two space two that doesn't make any sense um, saved it come here refresh the page uncaught syntax error unexpected number the unexpected number would be this two right here most likely this two and not this two but anyway it's really useful because it tells you the line that the error occurs on Objects tells you the file and the line number, so objects.js line 16. So now I know to go back into my editor, look at line 16. It has an error on it. Oh, there's the error. I can fix it, or you know, I could just get rid of all of this because it's not really useful. So that's the great thing about the developer tools. I believe Mozilla has developer tools, and obviously Google has their devel developer tools, and they're just really useful. So. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to create a function inside of the rectangle class and just say print. I'm just going to call it print. It's going to be a function. It's going to take no arguments. But just for the sake of showing you guys what an argument is, I'm going to put one in here. Um, Let's call it word. Actually, I'm going to call it what to say. And that is called a function parameter. So I'm going to make this function output to the console just 
some dimensions of the rectangle as well as whatever we put into that function when we call it. So the what to say variable will be filled when we call that function. I'll show you that a little bit later. So right now I'm just going to tell the console to print the rectangles width. And when you're pr when you're writing a function that is a member of an object, so for example, for instance, this print function is a member of this rectangle function because you're defining it inside of the rectangle object scope. So inside of this scope, you can reference the actual object itself from the function by using the this keyword. So this dot width will refer to rectangle dot width. You could also say rectangle dot width, but I like using the this keyword. It keeps things kind of neat and tidy. This way you don't always have to reference specific variables by name. You know you're getting this specific rectangles width when you use this keyword and say this dot width. So we're gonna output that as well as what to say. And that will make sense in a second when I call the function. And when you call a member function of an object, you would just say rectangle dot print. And the atom editor has some cool little features here that shows you what parameters are in a function when you call it. So for instance, this will show you the function name is print and the parameter it takes is what to say. It's saying it's a number, but I'm going to give it a string because loosely typed variables. It could be anything you want it to be really. And I'm just going to say, I'm a rectangle. And that will print in this order, the width of the rectangle. That should not be there. That would cause an error. The comma and the space. And then whatever we put into the variable, what to say when we call the function down here. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to Chrome browser. I'm going to refresh the page and it prints out 100 for the width. It prints out the comma in the space that we added in there. And it prints out I'm a rectangle, which is the value of the parameter that we handed the function when we wrote it right here. So that's just a simple kind of overview of JavaScript variables, um, objects, functions, how it's loosely typed, which means you don't have to specify the data type of the value you're assigning to a variable, um, which is great because you could just write code really quickly and really easily. You don't really need to think about what you're doing. Downside is it um, takes longer to compile because the parser has to figure out all of you know your variables for you. you're not telling it what they are ahead of time. So it has its pros and it has its cons. The pro is that it's really easy to write. So, And lastly, the last thing I'm going to do here is just write a simple function called say hello just to show you guys how to write a function outside of the object scope of rectangle, because obviously you're not always going to be writing all your functions inside of another object. And we're just gonna tell it to prompt hello. So when I come down here and I call the function, say hello, save the file, go back out to my browser, refresh, the page says hello. So very simple. Um, so you can define a function like this. You can define it inside of another object scope like this, or you can also, oh, you can also define it another way.
which is to declare a variable and assign that variable a function value. So there's lots of different ways you can do stuff in JavaScript. And by the way, this function down here will overwrite this function right here. I'm almost positive of it, but we're gonna test it and see how it works. Aha, overwritten. So these are all the different ways you can write functions. You can do a, an inline function. You can do, actually, I'm not sure if that's what you would call an inline function, but this is a function inside of the scope of another object. This is just declaring a function with the function keyword, and this is assigning a function value to a variable name. And there you have it. This is kind of just a very brief, maybe even a little vague kind of overview of how to write objects, variables, and functions in JavaScript. Really simple. I suggest play around with it. The best way to learn is to just play around with it and, uh, you know, figure it out on your own, just trying to help out a little bit. But anyway, I hope you guys learned something anyway. Um, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have more videos coming soon. Much cooler content, by the way. This is just for any absolute beginners out there. I'm trying to get people involved in programming because when I first started, I really enjoyed a good tutorial that really helped me out. And seeing my progress as I would progress as like a novice programmer from like when I was doing my first Hello World program and seeing the, the text output on the screen and being excited like, oh man, I made a computer do something like that was really cool. And I really appreciated the guys out there that put good tutorials out on the internet for just novice programmers to find and marvel over. So I'm trying to do the same thing, but a little later on, I'm going to be putting out videos on game programming, graphics, and much cooler stuff that's a little more involved, actually a lot more involved than just this stuff right here. So anyway, hope you guys stay tuned. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.